Co-Carnage recently streamed unguided organic gameplay of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen from a live pre-alpha server. While Co-Carnage has streamed Pantheon many times before, this was the first time it had ever been done on his own without any direction from the developers. These pre-alpha tests have always been under strict NDA, but now that Co-Carnage is an investor in Visionary Realms, he can more or less do whatever he wants. So for those who haven't tested Pantheon themselves yet, this was the best opportunity in the history of the game's long and storied development to see the true state of the game. Our journey with Co Carnage starts at the desktop of his computer, where we see him click on the Pantheon icon to go to the patcher, the login screen, server selection screen, a loading screen, and then to a shiny character selection screen. He of course did not already have a character to select, so he clicks on new, which brings up the character creation screen. Here, he comes up with a name and is presented with two drop-down boxes for race and class, and a toggle between male and female. The races currently available are human, elf, halfling, ogre, dwarf, and gnome, meaning that Arkai, Darkmir, and Scar are not yet implemented. And the classes currently available are monk, cleric, rogue, wizard, enchanter, shaman, and direlord which means that Druid, Paladin, Ranger, Summoner, and Warrior are also not yet implemented. While there will eventually be race class combination restrictions, these are also not yet in effect. As he selects each of the different races and classes, there is a little bit of lore for them revealed at the bottom for those that are into that sort of thing. Ko settles on a human monk. There are currently no character appearance customization options available because all of these character models will be replaced. I saw a lot of people express their disappointment about the character models in the comments, and that's totally understandable because these are not final. Visionary Realms recently hired a new character artist and an animator who are working on the real character models. Some of them, such as the Human and Dark Mirror, are already made but just haven't been implemented into the game yet. Next, Ko had two attribute points to assign however he wanted between the eight attributes. The starting values of the attributes depended on which race was selected, but in general, they started anywhere from 5 to 8. Now I will say the character creation screen is currently lacking details about what each of these attributes do, as well as the unique abilities inherent to each race. Pantheon is designed such that increasing an attribute by even one point should feel meaningful, so knowing what each of them do is important to know when starting out. Fortunately, this information is available elsewhere, which I'll put on the screen if you're curious, but at the very least, for now, there is a button to suggest how you allocate these points for your selected class if you don't know any better. With that, he hit Enter World and dropped into Terminus. More specifically, the monk's starting area outside the human city of Thronefast. Now, it's worth mentioning that while each race will eventually have their own starting city, all races start outside Thronefast for the purposes of pre-alpha testing, as the other starting cities haven't been built up enough yet. We see Ko sharing his starting area with halflings, elves, etc. Although, even with Thronefast, the city itself isn't done yet. It's safe to say that at least some of these class starting areas for the humans will be relocated inside the city walls themselves, when the time comes. Fortunately, there is a huge low-level adventure area outside the city to house this early player experience. After a quick look around, we immediately see that the world is looking a lot better than the gray box state it was in just last year. And according to Ko, performance was stable at 40 to 60 FPS. Right off the bat, Ko instinctively talked to the monk class trainer who sent him off on his first quest. A grand and daring quest to kill a rabbit and a snake. As Ko sets off into the wilderness, we can see quite a few unfinished NPC models, but we can also see that the area is quite populated with other pre-alpha testers, and the zone-wide OOC, or out-of-character chat channel, between players was very active. Reports are that the test session two months prior saw over 500 concurrent players here outside Thronefast, thanks to Visionary Realm's new proprietary network solution, Vinyl. Now, you might have thought I was joking about Ko's daring quest to go kill a rabbit and a snake, but the first snake he finds, he dies to it. This is a textbook example of how difficult Pantheon is, even at level 1. 
For one thing, Ko forgot to assign any of his starting abilities to his hotbar, so he was only auto-attacking. And secondly, he forgot to consider his target, which would have shown him that the snake was at least one level higher than him. And in Pantheon, it's very difficult to kill something higher level than you without help. But Ko stated at the beginning of the stream that he was feeling under the weather, so maybe we'll cut him some slack on this one. Maybe. Fortunately, at level 1, there isn't a death penalty, as he quickly learned these lessons of the harsh realities of Terminus. As he got the hang of things, he eventually discovered Pantheon's technique system, which is relatively new and allows access to different abilities depending on what weapon type you have equipped. These are in addition to the regular class abilities that you can acquire as you progress. With Ko being a level 1 monk, he only had access to the most basic, unarmed technique. He quickly figured out that when in combat, he generated a resource called Readiness, which he could spend on his technique for some additional damage. With that, he was off and running, churning through the first level completely on his own. So for those of you who are under the impression that you'll always be required to group in Pantheon, take note. Although as Ko correctly pointed out, you'll still need to watch your back. One thing that they stress they're going to be doing in this game, which I can't tell you how much I love in games like this, is they made it clear that the even though the world may be, you know, kind of in sections, it's not like a theme park MMO where you go to a starting area and you kill all the enemies that are perfectly your level there. Then you go to the next quest hub and all the enemies there are perfectly your level. And then you go to the next area and all the levels are there. All the things are perfectly your level. Like one of the things you're going to do is a great example is Oasis and EverQuest where it's like you zone in and there's like level 11 and 10 caimans on the beach. And then you go in a little bit further and there's like, you know, up to 18 ish orcs. And then in the middle, there's like level 44 specters. Um, there's a sand giant wandering around that's mid thirties. So it's like it, it definitely, the levels feel much more, I don't know if the word is immersive or alive, but not theme parky is the best way I can say it. Which bugs the hell out of me, man. But yeah, authentic. That's a good that's a good word for it. But I can't tell you how much it takes me out of an MMO when it just moves you to the different quest hubs and each quest hub is perfectly your level. And then once you're done with that, you never go back for any reason because there's nothing in those zones that will help you in the end game. I just that is that is so boring to me. That is exactly what they're not doing in this game. Before long, Ko turned in his first quest, which granted him some coin, but notably no XP. This is intentional, and a good example of how Pantheon is not a quest hub based game. Quests in Pantheon can reward you with money, items, abilities, even skills, but completing quest after quest is not the primary way of getting experience. Anyway, Ko chose to take the next step in his path to learning the ways of the monk. This quest instructed him to go find a crystal in the ruins to the southwest. It's at this time that Ko realizes that there is no map. And that's not just because it's pre-alpha and it hasn't been added yet. No, there is no map in Pantheon. Exploration and talking to other people to ask them for help is at the heart of Pantheon. There is a quest journal to review what NPCs have told you, so with that, Ko headed off in the general southwestern direction. And unsurprisingly, got a little lost but he discovered an area that he wouldn't have otherwise if there was a radar style map with blinking icons showing him exactly where to go. And because this is an open world game, when he ran into some trouble along the way, he could just ask for help from random passersby and they saved him. Next, he tested to see whether or not private messages were working. And I bet you can't guess who he sent a tell to. I think Basgrim's around here somewhere. Do tells work? Let's see if he's here. Oh yeah, look at that. Worked perfectly. That beautiful purple color and everything. Nice. As Ko looted things and sold things, he was able to buy more abilities from his class trainer. Although, as we can see, money isn't too easy to come by in Pantheon. Ko was lucky to ever have more than a couple silver pieces on hand at any given time when starting out. Though, maybe that's fitting for a monk if he wanted to roleplay taking a vow of poverty or something. Anyway, as Ko continued to explore, he found that Pantheon's climbing system is fully functional. He was able to climb on anything he could get his hands on, as long as he had enough endurance for it, which displayed as a yellow bar right next to his character. Endurance, by the way, is also consumed by sprinting, which is done by holding down the shift key. Ko soon discovered that the crystal he was looking for for his quest was not yet added to the game, and then he immediately died to the next mob he found. There was one server crash in the two hours that he played, 
But even when that happened, he was able to get back in game in under a minute. Exploring a bit more, Ko found that just by talking to NPCs in town, he got sent on more quests. Again, there was no visual indication that those NPCs were meaningful. He just came across them and started a conversation. One such conversation introduced him to the harvesting and crafting systems, or more specifically, the mining and blacksmithing professions. After trying to attack something with his mining pick still equipped, Ko found himself in a bind again and in need of assistance from whoever just happened to be in the area. Thanks to Pantheon's near death system, even when Ko hit zero health, he was not dead yet. While near death, Ko's health bar turned purple, his movement speed was greatly reduced, and he was not able to use any abilities. However, he could crawl at the expense of bleeding out faster and falling closer to actual death. While anyone could have come and rendered first aid in this state to get him back up, Homercles the Cleric came to the rescue and hit Ko with a heal to get him back on his feet. Although being recently revived, Ko wasn't able to enter that near death state again for a period of time while he recovered. Until then, if his health hit zero again, he would not pass go, he would not collect $200, and he would go straight to death. This is important to keep in mind as Ko soon came across a massive troll under a bridge, which is a prime example of what he was talking about earlier with higher level mobs being in the same general area as lower level mobs, meaning you really need to pay attention to what's around you. Ko then died to a rat. At this point, Ko decided maybe he should try another class, so he created a dwarf cleric. He got a taste of the perception system, which is how lore in Pantheon is revealed to the player organically through the environment rather than through walls of text. It's interactive though, meaning Ko could choose to pursue and explore these pings he received when in certain areas. This could lead him to search for more clues, complete what are called storylines, and possibly get some unique rewards. Ko, however, elected to ignore this. As nighttime fell, we started to see the world in a new light, or rather, a low light. This made it tricky when Ko grouped up with some other testers and had to find them in the dark, in an unfamiliar area, navigating purely by landmarks. Fortunately, once he got within a certain range, a direction indicator popped up on his UI to show him where they were. When he finally found them, we saw that the nameplates of group members were different from everyone else, and more importantly, the cheer emote works. Because each class is unique, group combat is where Pantheon really starts to shine. Kills came a bit easier, and XP came a bit faster. For a while anyway, until Pantheon proved once again that you need to be on top of your game. If you're not careful, even yard trash like rats and bats can be lethal. And with that, Ko wrapped up this show. Hopefully next time Ko will be able to get just a couple more levels and spend more time showcasing group gameplay and how to overcome the challenges, maybe in a dungeon that involves tight coordination and communication between his group members. Overall though, I think this was very much needed to show someone just starting up the game, logging in, creating a character, and exploring the world with other players. Just like you would when you first sit down to play Pantheon. This sort of stream is something the community has been asking for for a long time, and it hasn't been until recently that the early player experience has been fleshed out enough to show publicly in a way that would represent it well. As such, Pantheon for the first time ever will be holding monthly pre-alpha tests starting in January 2023 for all pre-alpha testers. So things are ramping up and there's likely to be a lot more opportunities to peek behind the curtain. If you don't want to be out of the loop about Pantheon's development as we move into the new year, hit the subscribe button now because this channel is dedicated to following it closely. I'm currently working on a year in review video for 2022 as sort of a continuation of my Saga of Pantheon's development thus far video that I released in 2021. So you definitely won't want to miss that one. If you want to make a difference in improving the quality and quantity of Bazgroom TV videos, click on the thanks button below this video or head over to our Patreon page. Either way, it'll be a big help and greatly appreciated. So until the next one, stay curious and adventure on.